Hi, Darren from Oz Off Good Living. I'm here with uh, Andrew from North Solar. Hi. Andrew, can you tell me a bit about this uh, device back here? I, I can see that it's uh, a solar hot water unit, but um, could you just maybe run through what it does, how it works, and how it um, can be used in for people that are living off grid and wanting to provide you know, uh, their own hot water? Certainly. We specialize in evacuated tube solar hot water system, which are these units here. And they work on the principle that they have glass tubes, which have a layer uh, which is evacuated, which acts as the insulation. And it has a um, layer of black material which absorbs the sun. And you have hot water in the main tank, uh, sorry, water in the main tank, and that gets heated up by the solar tubes. So the sun hits the tubes and it heats up the water in the tank and there's a heat exchanger, so a big glorified piece of copper tubing and cold water goes into the heat exchanger, it runs through the 30 meters of copper and the water is hot and it comes out hot. So at the moment this tank um, has just been heated at the expo, which has been for the last couple of days, and it's running at 76 degrees. So it's pretty hot. So, so there's, no, there's no water running through the tubes? There is water running through the through tubes, these? yep. So this has water running through it and the main tank. And then okay. the water in here, we can turn this on, this circulates through the actual uh, unit. So in about 30 seconds, be careful because you will burn yourself. It will run to about 70 degrees. So one of these units, it's a 200 litre unit, uh, will fulfill probably about 80 to 90 percent. Told you. It'll start steaming soon. It will fulfill about 80 to 90 percent of all um, hot water needs for a one to three person household. And then we also have modulated models which you can add on to it. Um, and we create and design all the equipment ourselves and we get it manufactured ourselves so we've got full control over it. And it's all standardized and modular so you can add that to a collector, a solar collector, to a wet bag stove to a hydronic system, to a wet flue, and you can keep going. So when kids move out, you can have lots of hot water. When kids move in back in with their partners, you can add another modular, and you can have more hot water. And you can add it to a hydronic system as well, so you can heat the whole house. Okay. So a system like that, um, it's mounted on the roof? It can be mounted... Normally mounted on the roof? Mo normally it's mounted on the roof. Uh, it can be mounted on the ground as well. Once you put it on the ground, obviously you have to take into consideration that the height and you may need a yeah. pump to actually circulate it. But okay. on the roof, it is no issue whatsoever. It can actually use gravity. So gravity food? Okay. Yep. Um, obviously, pressure is required to go in where, into the heat exchanger with the water, but that's standard to any system. Okay. Um, Weight-wise, do you need any structural considerations when if you know you're going to put one of these units on the roof yep no that's a good question the 200 litre units um, dry are about 200 uh, sorry wet they're about 350 kilos with a two to three distribution ratio between the back and the front so at the back you've got about 200 kilos at the front you've got about 100 kilos and then you split it in half so each leg is holding about 100 kilos at, at uh, the time that's equivalent to an average man a, a big average man and um, so it's not a particular issue we normally distribute the weight through RHS steel yep. um, and then it's a no-brainer once you do go into the slightly bigger units the 300 liter ones you're looking at a 550 kilo wet weight so it's still not an issue but anything above that you do want to have uh, cons engineering considerations I've got to ask this question how easy are these to break? Have you had a, a heavy hail storm or uh, just strong storms? So Generally pretty if you, good? If you drop the tube onto concrete, it will break. You, you guarantee that. But they are incredibly resilient. Uh, they are rated to 25 mil hail. Um, so golf ball hail is dropped from about one and a half meters on them. We've gone a step ahead and we've actually thrown cricket balls and net oh, really? balls and volleyballs at them. Eventually they break, there's yeah. no question yeah. about it, uh, but they are quite resilient. We've had over probably 100, 150 units active at the moment and we haven't replaced any tubes. We've replaced okay. about half a dozen tubes for people over time and uh, most of them are through a stupidity factor where they'll drop a hammer on it or something along those lines. Yep, yep. If I've got a, say, um, using one of these systems we've got maybe a 
three, four, five days of overcast weather, uh, you're talking about, um, well, for, for a start, you'd still get some heat out of the, it's, it's still warm water, even though it's overcast. And, and, if, and then uh, if you could talk to me a little bit about the um, your backup and maybe show us the, the unit here with yep. the water jacket. The advantage of the evacuated tube system is the uh, ambient temperature independent, so it doesn't matter whether it's actually hot or cold and uh, frost resilient. So in yeah. negative 10 degree temperatures, as long as the sun is out, it will right. still produce 60, 70 degree water. As long as the, the sun, sun is, is not out. out. If the sun is not out over about a one to two week period, which happens in Melbourne over winter, definitely, um, it still raises the temperature of the water to between 20 and 30 degrees. So in that scenario, you may need to have a booster. So in an ideal situation, you will have one of these units running into either a solar, an infin sorry, a infinity gas solar hot water system, instantaneous yep. Yep. Um, water system, or you can also uh, modulate them to a, a wet flue, which goes onto a wood heater, um, or a wet back stove, which actually has water running through it, and then it goes back into the actual main tank. If you're using a wet flue or if you're using a, a wet back, uh, you've got infinity amount of hot water. Obviously, assuming that you actually light your stove. If you don't light your stove, there's no heat. I notice we've got one over here. Yep. Can you uh, give Certainly. us a, a quick look? Yep. So. This is what's called a, a wet bag, a wet bag heater or a combustion heater. It has a jacket in the side and the back of the heater itself, which stores water. And at the back, you've got one inch uh, inlets, which allow cold water to go in, heat up when the stove is on, and hot water to come out. Then the hot water can go into the solar hot water system and it keeps the heat exchanger hot. You can also interconnect these into hydronic systems as such, so wall panels. And we design full systems including hydronics, um, wet bags and evacuated solid hot water okay. system to work as a unit. So the hydronic, the hydronic heaters, are they designed to have a number of these through the house? You're just connecting them with a Yep. Yep, that's exactly. So if you've got a five bedroom house, what we would do is we'd actually get the design of the house and we measure the exact uh, square meterage of it and we design uh, panels to be specific size to fulfill the requirements of each room and they can be heated by that, uh, the wood heater. It can also be heated by the solar collectors and you can work them all in line hmm. and you get practically free energy. Sounds good. I have another question about the water heater. Yep. What's this unit on top? What's this, uh, this is what's okay. called the header tank. The header tank sits on top of the main tank and all it does, it actually fills up the tank if the water evaporates. So what happens over time, especially in summer, um, the tank can get up to 90 and 100 degrees, so steam can come out for short periods of time. Um, this is in the southern states. Once you go in the northern states, Queensland and above, uh, you have to cover up some of the tubes even halfway because they're over efficient. So it's nice to have too much hot water, but they have too much steam hot water. I've had a hydronic system that when it boils, you know, water yep. sort of pouring out. Do you have a, what happens when it does overheat? Uh, do you get water pouring out, steam, or does it, does it actually boil very often? Um, I've, had a, I've had two systems sitting on my room for about a year, uh, on my roof for about a year and a half, and in about two weeks ago, I had it boiled the first time. Steam comes out and some water splurts out. So, you so it has a, a built-in protection yep. mechanism and it's nothing to worry about if you come oh. out and there's steam and it, water all coming out. It of does its thing for about 15, half, 15 minutes, yeah. half an hour, and then it stops. Okay. Uh, the advantage of it is as well, as my wife said, was that she can do uh, the, a hot wash in the washing machine oh. because then it just brings the temperature down as well. So it does go Google, Google, Google steam for a few minutes and then it's happy, but it doesn't affect the system at all. Okay. Excellent. Anything else that um, that I've missed? Any other yeah, I can things show that you. you can add so, to that? This is, as we said before, this is the the wet back or the water jacket uh, stove. Ah, oh, you can retrofit if you've got an existing uh, yep. slow combustion heater that doesn't have a water jacket on it. Yep. So 
We each designed that and built and manufactured them ourselves. So we our little baby, very proud of this one. And this actually replaces a standard flue. So a 1.2 meter uh, piece of flue, you pull out and you put this in and you can actually connect them to a hot water system or even a standard hot water system. So they've been designed and modulated so they don't actually specifically have to be connected with our systems. They will connect to anything which has a standard fitting half inch um, um, or three quarter inch and so on. Um, and these ones can be put in directly onto a wood heater or you can put it on the second part of the flue if the first part is too hot or you can even put it onto the third can part. Can we maybe just sit it up up there just to, so we can see where that might go? So this is sideways but generally it would be sitting facing backwards. Okay. Do it. So then you just continue with your flue on top? Correct. And you can still put your pretty design over the top of it so it'll still this be good. Uh, it will a bit yeah. definitely because a lot of the heat absorption is inside it because it has the the copper coil in there which is quite tightly wound up and um, so it does heat up definitely and you do want to have a protecting layer outside of it especially if you've got kiddies um, but generally it's common sense it's mm. very underrated so this it looks to me like it'd be a great uh, adjunct to Yep, a system for the week or two of cloudy weather. If you have one of those on a wood heater and a 200 litre system or a 300 litre system, yeah. you're about 99% there. You will not need any boosting besides that. Got to ask you about long showers. You can have long showers. How long? Three days? Oh, <laughs> well, long, but not, not that long. A 200 litre tank, that one at the moment uh, is holding 73 degrees. So you'd be able to pull about 350 plus liters of 50 degree water. Mm. Your shower, shower will run at about 35 to 40 degrees. So you'd be looking at about 4 to 500 liters of water. Okay. At six liters per minute, which is a standard shower head, you will probably drown before you run out of hot water. So in other words, it's more an issue of if you're on tank water, Yep, the fact that you're using water out of your tank. You will run out of water so before you run out of heat. heat. Thank you. Yep. Excellent. Great. That's fantastic. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. That's been great.